Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to now get into resolving our circle collisions in a physically accurate manner. Here we are inside the game class. If I scroll down here, we have our physics loop. This is where we're calculating our intersections between the entities. We are intersecting the circles and determining when we have a collision and we're passing out the depth of the collision as well as the normal to resolve the collision. We did some basic collision resolution here by moving each entity apart by the minimum translation vector. Now we want to create a function here and we want to resolve our collisions by creating an impulse that we can then add to the velocities that will then resolve the collisions. I'm going to make a function inside of our game class and this is just going to be a static function that is going to uh, solve collision. We're going to pass in the two entities that are in collision and then we also need the vector that is the normal of the collision. Uh, the first thing we need to do is determine if the entities are moving in such a way that the collision still needs to be resolved. And so what we need to do first is find the relative velocity. The relative velocity of the entities, um, we're just gonna take the velocity of B, and it looks like we don't have access to that, so let's go back into our entity class. We have the position and the radius, but not the velocity, so let's make a property that will give us the velocity. Back in our game class, uh, we get the velocity of V, and we're going to subtract the velocity of A. All right, and that'll give us the relative velocity, and we can kind of draw what that looks like. Um, so the relative velocity, if one is heading this direction, we'll say this is A, and then we have a, another one heading this direction, we'll call this B. The relative velocity is B minus A, and if you graph that, it's going to look something like this. So here's B. And then we add A by going to the end here of B. And A looks like this, but we want to subtract A. So we actually do a negative A, so it'll be the opposite direction. And then the relative velocity will look something like this. Okay, so this is a negative A, this is B, this is a negative A, and then this is your relative velocity. So we get the relative velocity, and let's just say our collision normal looks something like this. This tells us which direction we need to move B to be out of a collision with A. And if our relative velocity looks like this, and our normal looks like this, you can see they're pretty much opposite direction. If they are heading opposite direction, then it tells us we still need to resolve the collision. If we found the relative velocity, we'll just say this is our normal. If we found the relative velocity and it was heading the same direction, then we don't need to resolve the collision because they're already moving apart. Now let's talk about how we can determine that. So back in our code, we're going to create a function called the dot product. And the dot product will allow us to project one vector onto another. You can determine from that projection if those vectors are pointing the same direction or if they're pointing opposite directions. And I have a website here which will show us what that looks like. The red vector is the A vector. The blue vector or cyan vector is the B vector. And you can see in green we have A dot B. And the graphic representation is this yellow line right here which tells us A dot B is this yellow line here. Or A projected onto B is this line. As I change A, the closer I get to pointing opposite direction or away from the direction of B, the closer it gets to zero. Until right about there, it's at zero or really close to zero. It would be at zero if it was a perfect 90 degree angle. But now as I start to point the opposite direction, you can see A dot B is starting to give us some negative values. Everything over here is going to give us negative values. So we can determine if two vectors are pointing opposite direction or, or same direction based on the dot product of the two vectors. So back in our code, we need to actually create a function for getting the dot product. So back in our utility class, we have these distance formulas down here. I want to make another one for the dot product, and that's going to return a floating point value. I'm going to call this dot for dot product, and we're going to pass in two vectors. So now we need to figure out what is the dot product. Okay, so here we have the definition of the dot product. The dot product is found by multiplying the x components of each and the y components of each and then adding them together. Let's go ahead and just copy this and we'll bring the information back into Visual Studio. And I'm just going to put that in here as a comment. So now we can get the dot product. We'll go back to our game class. Let's go ahead and now determine if the collision needs to be resolved. If the dot product of the relative velocity 
and the normal of the collision is greater than zero, then we can just return because the collision is already resolving and we don't need to worry about it anymore. We need to calculate what is the impulse that we need to apply to the velocity of each entity so that they start moving apart in a physically accurate manner. And the first part, the first thing to calculate is what is the coefficient of restitution. So I'm going to call that E, and the coefficient of restitution is where we're just going to use the minimum of whatever the restitution is of the two entities. So we have entity A. Um, I want to get its restitution, which I do not have access to. So let's go up here, and we actually need to get access to the restitution and the inverse mass. So we'll create some properties for that. Inverse mass and then the restitution. All right, so back at our game class, whichever entity has the minimum restitution, that's the one we're going to use. Now we want to start calculating the magnitude of the impulse that will resolve the collision, and that is a formula that that is a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to be talking about here. So if you want to know a little bit more about how all of this works and how it's calculated. I have this great resource here. Um, it's written by Chris Hecker and it's called Rigid Body Dynamics. And he has these four articles here about physics for game engines. Uh, very interesting reads that will teach you, um, give you the basics about how game engine physics work. Uh, specifically the one we're using right now is the collision response article if you want to look that up. Great information that will go into more detail about how, how all of this works. But in the end, the equation we're looking for is going to give us a magnitude, and this is going to be the impulse magnitude that I'm going to call J. And the first thing we need to do is use the restitution. We're going to take a negative of 1 plus the restitution, the coefficient of restitution. And then we're going to multiply that by the dot product of the relative velocity and the normal of collision. Okay, and so that's kind of the first half of the equation. This has basically two parts. It has a numerator and a denominator. This will give us the numerator. And now the denominator, so we need to now divide J by the mass information. So we divide that whole top part now by the inverse mass of A uh, plus the inverse mass of B. And now we're going to actually figure out the vector that is the complete impulse. And all we have to do is take the magnitude and multiply it by the normal. There's everything we need to know to resolve the collision. Let's go ahead and apply it to the entity's velocities. So we're going to take the velocity of A, and we're going to now subtract the um, inverse mass of A times the impulse. And then with B, we're going to take the velocity and we're going to increment it by the inverse, inverse mass of B times the impulse. And that is everything we need do, to do to resolve the collisions. Keeping in mind, we're not actually computing rotation here, and we're not actually computing friction. All right, so, and you can see it's giving me an error here because I don't have access to the velocity. So, or I don't have access to setting the velocity. So let's go back into the entity class and let's, let's give us access to setting the velocity as well. Okay, so I think we've got everything there now. I'm just going to go ahead and run this, even though we're not actually resolving the collisions with that code. I'm going to run it and make sure everything compiles and works just like we had it before. And that looks right. Perfect. Okay, so everything's working just like we had it before. And all I have to do now is let's call our solve collision function. We're going to pass in the two entities, and that's just entity A and entity B. And then we need to pass in the normal, which is just this value here. And then I think at this point, we should see the collisions being resolved correctly. So let's go ahead and run that and just see what it looks like. And I, yeah, that looks good. I'm seeing them colliding and it looks like they're bouncing off at just the right angle. And there's not a lot of restitution going on because we picked some pretty low restitution values but from what i can tell it looks like they're doing it correctly in fact let's go ahead and give it a little bit more bounciness or a little bit more coefficient of restitution so up here in our initialize um, we initialize the asteroids to 0.2 i'm going to make this like point i'm going to make this 0 0.6 just for 0 0.6 for both and let's just see what happens they should look a little bit more bouncy
There we go. And actually, that looks really good. Perfect. Uh, that looks really good. I'm seeing everything looks like they're bouncing in a correct manner. Um, and depending on their mass, they influence each other in different ways. So the asteroids are a little bit more massive than the ship. So when the ship gets hit by an asteroid, it receives more force or the impulse it receives is more and gets pushed off a lot faster in a different direction. Okay, so that is a circle collision resolution using impulses.